Hello everyone and a very warm welcome once again to our North Severnside weekly online service. Today we celebrate St Luke whose feast day does fall this Sunday. It is thought the same hand that wrote Luke's gospel also wrote the Acts of the Apostles. So over a quarter of the New Testament is written by the same hand who we call Luke. The New Testament mentions Luke briefly a few times and it's in St Paul's letter to the Colossians that Paul refers to him as a physician. A physician is from the Greek word one who heals. That is why he is also thought to have been a physician. He is the patron saint of both physicians and surgeons. We are lucky in our parishes to have various people connected to the medical profession and we will be hearing from a few of them later in this service. But we begin this service with a hymn followed by an acclamation. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. You have given us a share in the inheritance of the saints in light. In the darkness of this age, your saints proclaim the glory of your kingdom. Chosen as lights of the world, they surround our steps as we journey on towards that eternal city of light where they sing the triumphal song. Open our eyes to behold your glory and free our tongues to join their song. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways. King of the ages, to you be praise and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. The saints were faithful unto death and now dwell in the heavenly kingdom forever. As we celebrate their joy, let us bring to the Lord our sins and weaknesses and ask for his mercy. You give your kingdom to the poor in spirit. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You satisfy those who hunger for righteousness and justice. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You give joy and gladness to those who mourn. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to the collect for today. Almighty God, you called Luke the physician, whose praise is in the gospel, to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the gospel, give your church the same love and power to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and remains with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 35. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Our Gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 10, commencing at verse 1. The Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him, in pairs, to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter first, say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
I'm here with Matt Thomas. Matt, who's your favourite gospel writer? I'm going to say St Luke. Uh, I'm going to say it for three reasons. One, he was a doctor. Secondly, I think he writes a succinct gospel. Um, it, it's all about telling the truth. It's maybe not got all of the flowery, beautiful language of John's gospel, but it's it tells the story. And thirdly, he wrote uh, he wrote Acts, and, and they, I think it's nice to see those books together. Luke and Acts should be read as one. Thank you. And you're a doctor yourself. I am. Yes. Yeah. I work uh, in the intensive care in um, University Hospitals Bristol and Weston, as we're now known, and I work for the air ambulance up in Ormondsbury. I guess this has been probably a year like no other. It has indeed been a challenging year. Um, it's something that we have prepared for, um, that we have training in, um, but still the speed and scale uh, with which the coronavirus pandemic came is unprecedented. And I think, I know that's an overused word, but I think in medical circles it's true. We had not seen anything like that in my career and probably no one's seen anything like it since 1918. Gosh, I mean, any signs of hope or optimism or? <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, you know, people are talking about what's happening now, but we clearly know an awful lot more about this virus um, and about our responses to it. And we know that we've got it down to incredibly low levels once, and I'm confident that um, we will do that again. Um, and we've got a plan, so don't worry. There's a plan. We will look after you. We've got enough space for everyone. Well, we obviously clap for our carers, but how can we pray for you? Um, I think... Uh, praying for people now for the strength for the second wave um, in any ongoing situation um, pandemics wars and so on people talk about this hitting the wall at six months and I think myself and colleagues some of us have um, hit the wall and um, we need to get beyond that and and, and go for it once again and um, so praying for that um, I think when I spoke I spoke to people in church about this and saying well look um, if we think of uh, the only way to cure this disease is probably with a vaccine. Um, but if we think about the gospel as a vaccine for the darkness in the world, um, let's hope that we can that could spread with the same speed as as the virus, and and then we can deliver the gospel as we delivered as we deliver the vaccine, because that's the um, that's the ultimate cure for people. That's what's going to cure the darkness. Um, that's, entered the world. Yeah, well thank you I mean, for what you've done it's absolutely amazing it's great to have someone in Alderston who's right on the front line in the NHS which is protected against the coronavirus so yeah. I'd say I'm far from the only one I think um, I think Alderston's not short of healthcare <laughs> professionals uh, and so um, there's there's a number of people working in the ambulance service and across the hospitals and uh, general practice and not just you know, doctors, nurses, other healthcare professionals and even those other people who, who do just uh, almost more important services, the teachers keeping our children educated, the people delivering our food, the farmers making our food, um, and even those people who might think, well, I didn't do anything, I worked from home. You, you did because you kept our country going um, because at the end of all this, we want something to come back to and there will come a time and, and churches will be full and people will be singing and uh, we will enjoy ourselves again. It will come, um, this this will pass and, uh, we want there to be a community and a society to come back to. I'll answer that. Matt, no, thank you very much. Okay, no problem. Hi, Mimi. Morning. You work in the care profession. Can you tell us what you find most rewarding? As a Christian, I think it's something that will enrich the life of others and mostly the people I support. And it's just something that will bring me joy and happiness just to see them do things and enable them to to have a happy life and to that's brilliant Mimi thank you you do a fantastic job for everybody Thanks. thank you hello my name is Ben Bradley as a doctor I specialized in clinical immunology I'd like to take you back 200 years uh, when the smallpox virus uh, killed one third of those infected and left the survivors blinded or scarred for life. This was a disease that had been endemic in the human race for 2000, since 2000 BC. 
Into this world, Edward Jenner, an inquisitive doctor in Berkeley, Gloucestershire, introduced vaccination. And in 1980, the World Health Organization declared smallpox had been completely eradicated from the world. And two centuries later, dozens of safe vaccines developed by the big pharma industry have saved countless billions of lives from diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, measles, mumps, rubella, yellow fever, polio and many others. And today the vast economic benefits and prosperity and peace of mind incurred through vaccination is incalculable. Last month Africa joined other continents in becoming free of wild poliomyelitis, an incurable disease that ravaged my youth, causing death or lifelong paralysis in children. Over 70 years, polio has been reduced by 99.9% .9 worldwide due to vaccinations. Next Saturday, the 24th of October, is World Polio Day. And we aim to raise awareness of all those diseases we avoid through vaccinations. Thornbury Rotary Club will be displaying a working model of an iron lung on this day in Alderston opposite the village stores as a reminder of how polio ravaged the lives of children during the 1950s. Vaccination is the most cost-effective invention in the whole of modern medicine. So, in summary, I'd like to say to you, please remember to take your flu jabs, weed out any anti-vaxxer viruses from your social media, pray for a Covid cure, and wax lyrical about the miracle of vaccination. Thank you. Stay safe. Hello, Rosemary. How are you feeling? Wishing I could feel a bit better, but I am progressing very slowly, but I'm impatient. That's because you were a nurse, isn't it? Can, you, can you tell me what it was like and why, why did you enjoy it so much? I did my nursing for three years at Southmead Hospital and then I was a staff nurse for a year. I enjoyed it looking after all types and kinds of people and their families. Brilliant. So as a Christian, do you think that's what you were called to do? To carry out sort of help with healing and caring for people? Yes, I, th I think so. I was a, a clinic assistant from the time I was 16 till 18. And then when I was 18, I could start my proper nursing training. Brilliant. So what do you think about the nursing nurses today in hospitals? Well, as I've just been in hospital, um, it's all new, of course, the new building. Um, but everybody was very kind and, and, and very thoughtful, so um, they really were very nice. Well, thank you for that, Rosemary, and we all wish you well and a speedy recovery. Hope to see you back in church soon. I hope so. Thank you. Bye. Bye. OK, well, Steve has asked what I felt being a doctor uh, meant to me. And I, I thought about this uh, for a little uh, and as to when I decided to start or embark on a career in medicine and thinking back as far as I can remember I've always enjoyed working out why broken things had stopped functioning figuring out what was wrong with them and how I could fix them and to be honest I guess nothing has really changed as I went through school this effectively left me with two options in my eyes firstly I could go down the engineering route and fix machines or secondly I could consider medicine and potentially fix people. Much as I enjoyed playing with engines and appreciated the not answering back I realised that human action interaction was and is actually very important. During medical training you, you visit all branches of medicine each of them trying to cure their uh, particular patients but it soon became clear to me that the obvious speciality uh, that I should be pursuing was actually orthopaedics. So, in a nutshell, I now spend my working days interacting with people, taking someone who is not functioning properly, figuring out 
what's wrong with them, fixing them and returning them hopefully to a pain-free, fully functioning life. How lucky am I? Let's restate our beliefs in the word of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today we celebrate St Luke. He was a Gospel writer and also wrote the book of the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul he was a missionary teacher and leader, and he was a physician. Some hold he was martyred for his faith. Our intercessions today reflect those attributes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in every age you have raised up holy men and women to reflect the light of Christ and to teach us the way of holiness. We thank you for those who have been teachers in the School of Christ. Give understanding to those who study the faith that the Church has handed on, and clarity to those who communicate the Gospel in a changing world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have been shepherds of your people. Give a pastoral heart to deacons, priests and bishops and the needful gifts to all your people in their ministry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have been Christian rulers in the world and for those who carried the good news to lands where it had not been before. Give wisdom to all who have power and influence among the nations and establish God's sovereignty among people of every race. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those whom you have called to live in community. Establish mutual love among those drawn into fellowship in your service and bless with Christ's presence all the communities to which we relate. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have lived out their vocation in family life. Give your grace to all who nurture children and all who care for the aged, and enfold in your love all your sons and daughters. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have brought wholeness through the medicine of the gospel. Give skill to all who minister healing and reconciliation in your name and comfort all who cry out to you from any sort of distress. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for the noble army of martyrs, by the shedding of whose blood the Church has been enriched. Keep under your protection those who are persecuted for the cause of Christ, and acknowledge, we pray, those who have passed through death, trusting your promises. Lord hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. If you can, think now of someone who, by their example, has encouraged and inspired you to walk more closely with God. We thank you today, Lord, for them, as we celebrate their memory or rejoice in their friendship, and we ask you to bless them and us. Bring into one communion and fellowship all those for whom Christ died. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously hear us. Hasten, Lord, the day when people will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at table in your kingdom, and we shall see your Son in his glory. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless the Lord. This week's service, of course, has been St Luke and about our medical professionals and about all those who work in the caring of others. And we struggled a little bit to think of a song that talks about Jesus the healer. And then we came up with this one, Who Took Fish and Bread, from our Youth Praise Days many years ago. you've enjoyed today's service. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. 
a final couple songs to uh, sing along with or clap to at home. I'm sure you know these ones. Give me oil in my life. Clap along to, sing along to the words, uh, drown me out on your on your video, on your TV, on your computer screens, because I'm sure you can sing a lot better. Give me all of my life.